Hello, my friends, and welcome into another edition of the JMAC live podcast. Uh, the first question from Mike was, are we live? And the answer is absolutely, we are live. It's been a while, so I understand uh, why you would want to ask that question. And I have, Mike, in the past, I have submitted or sent out pre-recorded broadcast as live. So I understand your uh, skepticism, but I felt like it was absolutely necessary to go uh, live today because of the historic nature of what has just happened in this country. And I want your feedback on it. Of course, I'm going to give you my feedback on it. Of course, I'm talking about the first president in United States history to be indicted for a crime. He's not the first to have come close. Nixon came close, but he was pardoned before that could happen. Uh, so he's not the first, but, well, actually he is the first, but uh, there were other times when it could have come close. Um, I want to remind you to please uh, support this podcast. I need your help to keep it going, and I've got a new way to do that. Some of you don't want to or can't make a monthly contribution, so I've got a tip jar now. Uh, just like my old days in the restaurant industry, I've got a tip jar. You'll see the link to it down uh, in the description. Click on that and tip me whatever you think is appropriate for the content that I am bringing you. So uh, let's see here. Some of your comments right up front. Mike asking, is it live? Yes, it is. Um, Orion says if Donald Trump gets conviction, he'll be ineligible for the ballot in the state of Utah. Utah Constitution Article something something six. I did not know that, Orion. That's interesting. I wonder how many other, um, uh, I wonder how many other states have something like that. Mike says there is so much fail in this indictment. Um, let's see here. Jenny joining us. Hey, Jay, I'm so happy to be here and hear what you have to say about all of this. Um, uh, Mike says, care to make a gentleman's wager? Well, so far, um, I have been right on this one. If you look at my YouTube page, uh, I put out a video a couple of weeks ago saying, that Trump will absolutely 100% be indicted on uh, this situation with Stormy Daniels. Not only that, I went so far to predict that he will be indicted in the confidential documents scenario and he will be indicted in Georgia. He is looking at three indictments right now. Um, what a special gift that he has to, <laughs> to, uh, uh, bring about indictment. So we're going to talk about all different things. Will this help him? Will it hurt him? What evidence is there? Uh, what should be your response? What is my response? Uh, but I just, I just want to tell you, first of all, that I feel pretty good that I made a prediction that uh, actually came true. Many of you know I'm not the best at predictions. And of course, predictions are just opinions. Um, I, uh, I still wish I was right way back when, when I predicted that Dancing with the Stars would be just a horrible broadcast and would be cut off the air before the first season was done. We all know how that goes. So not the best track record. But with Trump, I've been pretty good. Uh, I did predict he was going to lose in 2016. So, um, But I also predicted he was going to lose in 2020. So you got to kind of, you got to kind of balance those things, uh, out. Um, let me, 
uh, ask you to like and share uh, and follow wherever you are watching. And again, you can tip me now. Uh, just put a little tip in the tip jar and that will help out. Okay. Uh, a, a couple of things here I want to start out with before your, uh, your comments come flying in it. And they already are. Um, if anybody out there is saying, and some of you are, that Trump is innocent or that Trump is guilty, if you've already come to that determination, then your partisanship is showing. It, it, you're already in too deep. You just are. Um, we don't know what is in the indictment. We don't know what he will be charged with. Well, we don't know anything. Um, I just heard from an attorney just before I went on the air who was involved in some of this grand jury uh, information, and he said that this is a vast case with vast documentation and that they would never have brought this case if they felt that they couldn't win this case, especially knowing how much it could help Donald Trump. Now, this is one lawyer's opinion. But you have Republicans are now saying that uh, this is a horrific witch, witch hunt. Trump is saying it's a witch hunt. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, the House Speaker, is saying he's going to investigate uh, Mr. Bragg before he's even seen the evidence. Um, if any Democrats are saying, finally, finally, uh, Trump is going to get his, well, I got to tell you, you're all up in the night. You're all, you're, you're all stuck too deep in partisanship and th there should be meaning to the term innocent until proven guilty. That should have value to people, especially when we don't know what the charges are and we don't know what the evidence is. That should have value. And what everybody should be saying right now is Trump has been indicted and he is innocent until proven guilty. And I can't wait to see the evidence that they have against him. Anybody who is talking about the weaponization of, of the government to go after Trump, this, that, and the other thing, it's, it's all partisanship nonsense. It is. It is. And I've, I've made that clear to you many, many times. I'll give you a perfect example. Today, uh, in Trump's statement, long statement, he brought up all of the things that the Democrats had done to him and all of the, uh, you know, the attacks and the weaponization of the Democrats. And one of the things he brought up was Russia. And he said it three times, like Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. He said, Russia, Russia, Russia. And, and I've tried to explain this to you many times. And I'll try one more time. The Russian collusion investigation is not evidence of a deep state weaponized against Donald Trump. It's just the opposite. It's actually proof and evidence that the system worked. And this is where people get, they get so twisted. Now, there were some FBI agents who we know were against Trump and plotting against him. There was the Steele dossier that was found out to have uh, false information in it. There was Trump firing James Comey. And all of that resulted in a Republican 
calling for a special counsel in the Russian collusion case. Now, what happened in that case? Exoneration. Exoneration. This is what is supposed to happen. You have evidence. Uh, Trump and his family lied about what happened in that meeting with Russia. So you had all of these reasons to suspect. And so they appointed a special counsel because they suspected wrongdoing. That special counsel spent all of his time and due diligence investigating whether or not there was collusion. What did he find? He found no collusion. Surely, if this was a deep state weaponization against Donald Trump, they would have found something. But they didn't. Russia is, the the Russia collusion investigation is not evidence of a weaponized state against Donald Trump. It's evidence of the justice system playing out the way it's supposed to be. And in fact, uh, Mueller said that Trump could have been prosecuted for obstruction of justice, but because of of a longstanding rule, Uh, They don't indict a sitting president. Now, that was just a rule. It wasn't a law. It was just a just a rule. And he decided to stand on that rule. Russia is an example of the system working. So we now need to look at this situation. And wait for the evidence. Is that, is that really too much to ask in today's world? Is it? Is it really too much to ask for in today's world that we wait for evidence? Let me tell you something that is really cool. And I've mentioned this before about waiting for evidence is you never have to be wrong. You never have to be wrong. Uh, so when the Russian collusion investigation happened, everybody was taking sides and the Democrats were saying he did it and the Republicans were saying he didn't. And I was saying, let's wait and see. And I said, let's wait and see for the whole investigation. And then when the information came out, I read the entire Mueller report several times and then came to my own conclusions. People who have already decided that this is a political witch hunt or that this is Trump finally going to get convicted for crimes we know he committed, you are a partisan hack. I'll just say it. You are. And you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because this is what should be happening with everybody. Is everybody should be saying, okay, let's see it. And, and let me tell you something I'm saying. It better be good. It better be really good. Uh, because this is a really big deal, what they've done. And I, I can't for the life of me believe that they would bring an indictment against a former president, somebody who's running for office again, somebody who has such huge popularity. I cannot believe that they would do this if they didn't believe that they could firmly, firmly convict. So, well, let's just wait and see. I think that that would be um, the appropriate and uh, American answer in a society that is supposed to be uh, innocent until proven guilty. Now, we know that Michael Cohen went to, to jail for uh, things related to this case. And uh, we know that Michael Cohen's integrity 
has been impugned and he's not going to be a very reliable witness. We also know that Stormy Daniels has been impugned and she's not going to be a very reliable witness either. So my, my suspicion is that this is going to come down to documentation. And if the president made a payment to Stormy Daniels and did it through uh, shell companies or made the payment and logged it as legal fees, then a crime was committed if he knew this. And it could be a political crime. It could be a payment made to benefit a campaign. And if that's the case, then that makes it even more substantial. And having been somebody who uh, has run in two political campaigns now, I can tell you that the FCC is brutal, brutal in how they look at these types of things. I, I, uh, to me, the FEC is worse than the IRS. And, uh, I would not mess with them or mess with FEC laws. I just wouldn't do it because they are, uh, they are, they are brutal. Um, so again, anybody who has already decided, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Um, the, now let me ask you this question as well. And Mike, I can't, I just don't have time to read your, your long, your, your long, um, statements. Find a way to condense them. Find a way to shorten them, but don't hit me with a bunch of short ones either. You've got to find a way to condense them down. Um, cause in this format, I just, I just can't read all of you, all of your statements. Um, will this help Trump? Well, he's already sending out fundraising information on the indictment. He sent out fundraising requests last, um, last Tuesday or last week when he said he was going to be, uh, indicted on Tuesday and got a bunch of money. I personally think that this is going to harden his core supporters, but he can't win with just his core supporters. So I think it can help him in the primary. I still think he's by far the number one uh, potential candidate, as Trump will tell you himself, for winning the primary. But I do not think he can win another general election. And I've explained that to you many times, uh, because he creates, uh, he creates rabbit fans, loyal fans and supporters. But most people who do that also create, uh, opposition. And in his, his, his case, he has created more opposition then he has created support. And uh, any candidate who's going to win a general election has got to be able to pull solidly from the middle. Trump has not been able to do that. So I do not think um, that I think that him being indicted will help him raise money. It will help him raise primaries or win primaries. But I do not think that it will help him win the 2020 election. All right. Let's see if we can go back here. Um, Mike, I'll try and read some of your stuff. Um, Orion says, uh, whoa, that's tiny. Says Trump should call in his posse in and fortify their position at Mar-a-Lago. They're already setting up um, security in New York City. In fact, they've sent out a notice to every single police officer in New York City to report tomorrow uh, in uniform and ready for whatever happens. And that is a total 
of 36,000 police officers. Um, let's see. Mike says the only professional field with more disagreement than scientists is legal scholars. Um, and then Mike says, Jay, you don't fall into that category. You knew he'd be indicted. That's an easy guess given the jurisdiction and the fact that Cohen's own lawyers impeach Bragg's laughable allegations. Well, I don't know how, Mike, I don't know how you call them laughable when we don't know what's in the indictment. And uh, that's that's a problem. To call them laughable and we don't know what's in them, I take issue with that. Um, Orion says, I am happily biased against Donald Trump, so if the arresting officers don't do that thing where they push his head down and bumps into the roof of the car, I'm okay with that. That's not going to happen. Uh, in fact, I would be very, very surprised if they did the perp walk for Donald Trump. I'm going to guess this does not happen out in the open. I'm going to guess you're not going to see Donald Trump in handcuffs. I'm going to guess he comes from a back road. They arrange another location. I'm going to guess he will be released on his own reconnaissance and that this will not be made into a public spectacle. That is... uh that is uh, where we're at right now. Uh, let's see here. David says, if violence on the level of January 6th happens, I can imagine it will help him. I'm not, I'm not expecting that. Um, he did suggest that there would be violence, and then he backtracked from that. Um... I don't think an indictment is going to cause violence. I do think that a conviction would possibly cause violence. Um, but we'll have to see on that. Um, let's see. Um, Mike, we're not going to try and... Um, explain away the January 6th rioters. Even go back and um, look at my podcast. And I did one where even Donald Trump is admitting that they were his supporters and that what they did was wrong. And he did that by blaming all of it on Mike Pence. Um, and he's changed the story on that like crazy. But go back and watch that. Um, let's see. We've got somebody who is spamming us. Uh, this is Mirage on Twitch. The fact that Democrats care more about a senile old man that cares more about chocolate chip ice cream than school shooting victims pretty much sums up the left's morality in a nutshell. Well, let me... Let me tell you a couple of things that I don't like about your posts. First of all, we're talking about an indictment of Donald Trump. When we're talking about the indictment of somebody and the decision is to deflect to somebody else or some other party, then to me that says that perhaps you don't know how to defend in the situation we're actually talking about. Deflection does nothing. It doesn't strengthen your argument. It weakens your argument. And to me, although there are people on both sides of the issue who are chattering and saying what's going to happen, this is not a partisan issue to me. Never has been. This is an issue of whether or not an, a regular American citizen broke the law and whether or not other people who have done similar things 
have broke have been charged. That's what this is about. I keep I keep hearing people say this all the time. I, I hear it on Fox News all the time, and it drives me crazy. They say a former president has been charged dot, 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 or has been indicted or might be indicted. And when they say it, they are using the words former president as some kind of excuse, as if to say that a former president cannot and should not be indicted. Now, where did they get this idea? It's a nonsensical idea. Any person who has committed a crime can and should be charged with that crime. The fact that he's a former president makes no difference. And in fact, this particular crime that he's been indicted for happened before he was president. So whether or not he was the former president of the United States, it is historical, but it is not relevant in any way, shape, or form to this investigation. He is being charged as a civilian for a crime that is alleged to have happened when he was a civilian. If you're saying, oh, a former president has been charged and you think that for some reason former president means that he uh, somehow is under some different standard, that somehow he's not held accountable to the law, where does that come from? Where does that come from? Nixon would have been charged if he hadn't have been pardoned. So... Former president, that's just historical. It is not relevant to the story at all. Now, if once we see the indictment and the evidence, and you can clearly see that uh, there was bias in the case, uh, things like that, partisanship in the case, then you can bring in partisanship. But former president, I'm tired of that being brought up. It's absolutely irrelevant that he was the former president. Absolutely. Um, Let's see here. Let's go back and see what I can see. Um... Uh, Mike said it all centers around the Stormy Daniels payoff occurred years ago, statute of limitations. DOJ declined to pursue this as a photo op, nothing more. Um, it was initially uh, started by the federal government. You are correct, but that does not excuse it because... Um, a state can take up criminal actions against somebody when uh, a federal organization has chosen not to. That doesn't excuse Trump, and it doesn't convict Trump. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh. Uh, Ryan says, I'll put this out there. If J-Mac paid a hooker to keep her silence with his campaign money, he would have gone down for that. (laughs) Unless I didn't get caught, Orion. (laughs) Uh, Curious, uh, is it asparagus? On uh, Twitch says, Trump got indicted. Ha, ha, ha. And still laughing. Ha, 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 ha. (laughs) Um... Let's see. The evidence, Mike says, the evidence that the DOJ got the money came from Cohen. He wasn't repaid, so there is no link. Can't fabricate evidence now, can you? One can speculate till the cows come home, but the DOJ FBI investigates and they declined. Look, 
You are um, taking shots in the dark, Mike. That's what you're doing. You have no idea what evidence they have. Um, it appears to me that you're looking for a way to excuse this investigation, which is fine. You can do that. Um, as for me, I will wait to see the evidence. And I, I can guarantee that there is a paper trail here. If there was not a paper trail, they would not hang their case on Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels. There's just no way in creation they would do that. Uh, I can promise you they have paperwork, they have a paper trail that is considerable and uh, that can present the case most likely without the witnesses because I think you and I would agree, Mike, these are both terrible witnesses. So, uh, they've got to have, they've got to have more than that. Uh, David responding to Mike, it's easy for many to get away with violent crimes because no one documents them as they are documented. There's a much greater array of possible evidence. Um, uh, Mike says it's an allegation. I can allege it stole my car and I am state powered attorney. I have unlimited funds to go after you for a trumped up charge. This is not necessarily, uh, true, Mike. Um, there has to be evidence, uh, that is presented to a judge to be able to keep you behind bars. You can be picked up if somebody alleges you stole their car and there's probable cause, you can be picked up and then you're arraigned. And in that arraignment, you can present that there's no evidence and you will be released. Now, in this case, the uh, prosecutor used a grand jury uh, to decide whether or not he should indict. Now, we all know, or we should know, that grand juries can be swayed in many different ways. And just because a grand jury chose to indict does not mean that President Trump is guilty. But it does mean they at least saw enough to where they felt like they should indict. So this is... This is nowhere close to your example of somebody accusing you of stealing a car and you didn't. Nowhere close whatsoever. Trump has been, uh, if you don't think Trump and his attorneys have been involved in this case from day one, then you're mistaken. They have asked for it to be thrown out. They have asked for evidence to not be put into place. Uh, they were given a chance to speak before the grand jury. They chose not to. Um, this is just not that case. Who's, he is indicted. He'll have a chance to challenge the evidence before it even goes to court. And then in court, we'll get to see the evidence. But you can't just accuse somebody of stealing something and they go to jail. It, it, it just doesn't work that way. It never has. Um, let's see here. Um, you guys are kind of going back and forth. Uh, Orion says Trump will be dead and gone and Mike will be like, nah, brah, he faked his death like Elvis. <laughs> now, Orion. Um, we're all entitled to our opinions here. Um, my suggestion is that you would be all much better off if you wait and see and that anytime you've decided ahead of time, you're setting yourself up for embarrassment and, um, and a loss of credibility, you know, and if you're fine with that, then, then great. You can be fine with that. I'm not. I'm not. And I'll tell you why I'm not. Because 
I'm not in the politics. I'm in the truth. I want to know the truth. And I don't care who it benefits. I absolutely do not care. If the evidence comes out and Trump gets exonerated again, this is the whole thing. If, if it goes to a, a trial and this is all trumped up and there's, there's no evidence and he's exonerated, then it's awesome for him. He can continue to make the claim, right? If he does get convicted, it's awesome for him because he can say it was a witch hunt and everything was bad. So from Trump's perspective, I don't see a downside with this per, with this uh, particular case. I do see a downside for people who have already made up their mind and who are attacking somebody they don't know for an indictment that has not been opened and you do not see the evidence. I question your judgment if you have made your decision with that limited amount of information. Information. Um, let's see. Mike says, Hubis will be your downfall, Orion. Uh, Orion and Mike, you, I'm going to put you two in a room and you're not going to be able to come out until you you get along till you can hug and you can get along with each other. I was just checking to see here. I wanted to remind you that now instead of becoming a member of the JMAC Members Club, which is good, it's $5 a month or more, you can also just drop me a tip in the tip jar. And there's a link to do that in, uh, in the, uh, the description to wherever you are listening. Um, Mike says, I hope they address Trump. The thermonuclear backfire will be hilarious. He says, Jay, I say do a stream yard call in and we can all go at it. Um, I've been working on a way to, uh, I mean, I can, I can bring in, in my current system, my screen is being weird here. I can bring in up to 10 people in this system. Um, but I, um, I don't think a bunch of people talking over themselves, uh, would be, uh, a good way to go. Um, and this system has, has a way to do it. I, like I said, I can, I can bring in 10 different people at one time. I could probably bring in more. Um, but I, I just think that's asking for trouble. Maybe we'll do it one day. Um, Mike says, and now that I have my house, I have a good setup for this similar to yours. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out about Trump, um, that he always does. And it drives me crazy is he always brings up unknown supporters. Like he made this statement the other day, like, and every legal expert in the country knows I'm right. He said this before about when he was in office and all the other countries respect us now. I just, he, he always brings up sources that are non sources. And I just don't know why anybody would believe any of this because he never tells you who it is. It's just this imaginary group of people that he has come up with and they all agree with him. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the other things um, uh, that drives me crazy. Let's see. David says, I know that's what you're talking about. My point was, it's hard to pinpoint those crimes to be specific people. I say it's likely they have a lot more evidence here. Um, Cottonmouth on, um, on Twitch just says no. Um, 
do me a favor because we move along through so many comments and I say so many different things. Uh, tell me no to what be a little bit more descriptive because, um, otherwise I won't know what you're saying no to. Um, let's see. Uh, Ping Pong on YouTube says, if you don't agree, that means you are not a legal expert, Trump's thinking. Yeah. Um, uh, let's just put it this way. Trump is not a legal expert um, by any stroke of the imagination. I do think he's a business expert. And when he first ran for office, I was really loving the idea of having a businessman run the country. And uh, there were some good things that came of that. Unfortunately, he was so narcissistic and so worried about himself getting all the credit for everything. There were moments when he should have acted on behalf of the country, but he acted on behalf of himself. And that's when he lost me. And ultimately, with the election lies, that's that's when he lost me. Um, I've said it over and over again. The, there was somebody who tried to steal the 2020 election, and his name is Donald J. Trump. He tried to steal it. Um, so uh, that's my thoughts on... Um, the announcement today from Trump, and we'll have to wait and see what uh, comes out of the indictment. Again, my expectation is that there's going to be something there, there. Um, uh, otherwise, I, I just can't imagine that they would go this far. And uh, I expect there to be an extensive paper trail. And I expect there to be a significant amount of evidence. If not, then uh, Bragg and all of his people should be thrown out of office and should be shunned completely by society. Uh, let's see. Ping Pong says, has Trump ever spent a day with a group of working class Americans? I doubt it, yet those if any are out there making noise on his behalf and are those people he is too afraid to hang out with them as an equal. Well, he did sit in a room with them when he did The Apprentice, right? Those were all working class people. So I guess you could say um, that. Mike says uh, he wants to do a friendly wager. I say a friendly wager. I win. You have to put a Trump 2024 bumper sticker on your car. I lose. I put a Biden sticker on my car. What's the bet that he, um, that he gets exonerated? What's, what's the bet? Is it that they don't have evidence? Tell me what the bet is. And, uh, then I will tell you if I, uh, agree or not with your your challenge um anything else you guys want to talk about about the indictment i just knew i had to go live uh because this is historic and um there are so many differing opinions and because um because it has so much impact. So Mike says that the case doesn't go to trial or conviction. Um, I, no, we gotta, you gotta clarify a little bit more because, um, he could easily settle this case. So, um, that it doesn't settle or go to trial or, um, conviction. So you would say it doesn't see, see, this is the thing, Mike, and this should, this is where, um, where we're going to have issues. I've made no claim one way or the other that he will be convicted or that he will be exonerated. 
you want to make a bet with me that he will be exonerated. But you're trying to make a bet with somebody who has said he's going to wait for the evidence. You should be making the bet with somebody who has taken the other side. Because right now, because you haven't seen the indictment, you haven't seen the evidence, you are uh, completely uninformed about what's in there. So um, you need to find somebody who has taken a different position than you. Because my position is, let's wait and see. How do you make a bet with me on that? Um... Uh, Ping Pong says soon Trump will be in prison where every day someone will take his pudding. Um, I Even if Trump is convicted on this, I don't think he goes to prison. Um, Mike says indictments are handed out like candy, so the indictment on the grand scheme doesn't mean diddly, so it has to go trial or conviction. I was sort of uh, posing this to Orion. Oh, okay. Oh, you're so the bet is to Orion. Yeah, if you and Orion want to make a bet, that's uh, that's fine. Um, uh, I don't necessarily agree with you that indictments are handed out like candy. Um, Michael says, "Mike, wait and see." Um, Orion says, if Trump gets an acquittal from a jury, I'll put up a sticker. <laughs> um, guys, I, it's, man, it is so easy to just sit and wait. It is so easy. And it's relaxing. I mean, look at me. I'm just like, ah, I'm just so relaxed today. Yes, something major came out, but I'm not going to get worked up on one side or the other because I'm just going to wait for the evidence. It's refreshing. It's, uh, you can meditate with it. You can just in with, in with the good and out with the bad. And, and you can't be wrong in this way. It's just so nice. Why don't, why don't you, uh, why don't you try it? Just see. David asks, do you think, uh, this is a good question. Do you think indictment in the Georgia election case is likely? Yes, I do. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, we, we heard the recordings and apparently there's more recordings. Uh, based upon the recordings alone, I think there was tampering with evidence. Now, that's just me and what I've heard. I'm not up to date on Georgia's laws and things like that. But in that case, from what I've heard, I absolutely believe there will be an indictment. Um, let's see. Ping pong. Maybe they make Trump pick up litter along the highway. <laughs> oh, in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> if only dreams could come true, ping pong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Mike says, regarding the Georgia case, has there been an indictment? No. No. Um, I believe that there, uh, is there a grand jury? I'm not sure. It's not. It's not coming into my head right now. Um, there is a special prosecutor we know for Trump and Biden on the confidential documents. Um, from what I've seen, uh, very good chance that Trump will get indicted. Uh, not a good chance that Biden will get indicted. And not for political reasons, but because of how each case was handled. In one case... The documents were taken. They were requested back. They were told by attorneys they didn't have the documentation. Uh, then uh, they asked even more. I think they went almost a year and a half asking for these documents. And they finally 
uh, they finally raided his home, and lo and behold, there were the documents. In Biden's case, the documents were found during a search, um, and the minute they were found, well, let's say not the minute, he may have waited a couple of days for an election, but um, when they were found, they notified authorities. And just just so you know, the way the confidential documents uh, laws work, if you are, let's say you work with confidential documents and you got a stack of paper on your desk and you put that stack of paper in your briefcase and you take it home. And then you get home and you realize, oh my goodness, I took home confidential documents. There is a way and a system and a legal way to deal with that. You call the authorities and you say, hey guys, I made a mistake. I took home confidential documents. And they come out. They see the circumstances where the documents are. They find out if any of the information was released. They discover if it was an intentional act. And if it wasn't, if it was just a mistake, then there's not even a slap on the wrist. Not even a slap on the wrist. So when it comes to Pence and Biden, you would have to show an intent to possess the documents and to hide the fact that they had the documents. With Trump, all of that is is apparent and then some. And how do we know that? This is the key. How do we know that? Because Trump told us all of it. With each new excuse he gave us, he revealed more information. And he even went to a rally and said he wants his documents back. They were his documents, which when you talk about whether or not he's a legal scholar, uh, whether or not the documents are classified, they are not his. They belong to the American people, and it was illegal for him to possess them even though they weren't classified. So there's a huge difference between Trump's situation and Biden and Pence. So again, I see action on the Trump side. I don't see action on the Pence-Biden side. And of course, everybody's going to say, see, that's part of the witch hunt. And they're going to compare them as if they're the same thing just like they're comparing what Trump did with what Hillary did. They're not the same thing. Hillary had a server outside of the outside of the uh, government system that was illegal. There were no classified documents found on that server. They did find emails where they talked around confidential documents, but if you didn't have the documents, you wouldn't know. Um, and don't get me wrong, she she broke rules, but those rules are things that were not typically prosecuted. Now, there is the issue of the missing server, and I can't speak to the missing server and what was on the server. I can only speak to uh, to what we know and so I can tell you Hillary, Biden, and Pence do not in any way, shape, or form compare to what Trump did. And here's the biggest question for me that I still don't understand and nobody has ever been able to tell me. Why did he take the documents? I just don't get it. You know... One thing for sure is that Trump does everything that he accuses other people of doing. He, he, he says things like, if you take the, the fifth, then you're guilty. And then he takes the fifth 500 times. He says, if you're, if you have classified documents, you should lock her up. That's what he said in the debates. And then he's got boxes and boxes of classified documents. It's unbelievable 
how this man projects what he does every single day. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's the classified documents thing. Um, let's see. Uh, Mike says, no, there were, uh, there were marked emails as classified on Hillary's servers. Um, I just went back and looked at that case just recently. Um, if you have that link, send it to me. I'd like to see it. Um, let me see. Mike, 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 Mike. Um, um, oh, Mike's trying to justify Trump's call. Find the votes isn't the same as fabricate the votes. Um, when you, when you give a specific number, when you say, I need you to find and down to the one, the exact number of votes you need to find. If you look at that and you don't see fabricate the votes, then you and I live in a different world. Because what the call should have said was, do, uh, can we re audit? Can we re audit the major counties? Can we, uh, can we re audit this particular county? And let's see if there are more votes. That's what you say. And that's what every, that's what every person who has ever challenged a vote in my life of covering elections has said. I want to audit the vote. I want there to be a, a special audit. And by the way, there were three already that had been done in Georgia. I have never in my life heard somebody say, I need 11,321 votes, whatever the number was. That is not a request to audit an election. That is a request to come up with votes in his favor. I do not understand how anybody can see that as, hey, do an audit and see if we're missing votes. How about that? It's not what he did. He asked for a specific number, man. Specific, specific number. Um, when you say you think I'm reaching... Are you talking about him asking for a specific number of votes? Because, uh, as I said, I've only been covering elections for 25 years. And I have never heard somebody ask for a specific number of votes. Ever. 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 Because it's, it's an outrageous request. And, and, and keep in mind, he didn't just say you need to find them. He then threatened them and said their jobs are on the line and there is legal jeopardy here. And this is the president of the United States saying this. So the president of the United States calling the state of Georgia saying, I need to find 11,780 votes so I can win your state. And you think that that is reaching? That, that is unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. And then saying that your jobs are on the line and that you could get into legal jeopardy? Wow. Wow. That is amazing to me. I don't see how you can see that as anything else. <laughs> Again, if he said, look, I, I think there's questions with your uh, election numbers and I'm going to call for another audit. I've heard that hundreds, if not thousands of times over the years. Because that's what you do. Hey, can we get a recount? And a lot of states have an automatic recount. 
But I here's the other thing. I guarantee you Trump has no clue how these votes are even counted. He has no clue even how these systems work. That's clear in everything that he said. He literally thinks that if you take a uh, 100,000 ballots and you print them up at a Kinko's, which we don't have Kinko's anymore, I'm showing my age, and you put them in a drop box, that those 100,000 votes will be counted. It's nonsensical. That's not the way it works at all. There's an electronic file already. And when the votes come in, they have to match the electronic file. And only one vote can be recorded for the electronic file. So you could put a million ballots in a ballot box. But if they don't match the electronic voting record, they get thrown out. And when Georgia did its three elections, they first checked the electronic file, then they checked the paper tri- file, and then they compared them both. And guess what? They matched. But Trump will go on and tell his people that it was a stolen election and that he really won Georgia. And not only that, he just said the other day that he won more votes than any president in history. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mike says, you have to remember Trump was never a politician. So because he didn't ask a certain way, doesn't default that he was demanding to fabricate stuff. <laughs> um, guess what? First of all, Mike, ignorance of the law does not excuse you. Second of all, he's surrounded by a legal team. And third of all, every single person around him in the White House told him not to do it, told him he lost the election. These are all people who were close to them. They have all gone on record and said that they told him that he had lost the election and that he continued to persist with this lie. So he knew, he knew he had lost the election, yet he is still on the phone with leadership in Georgia saying, find me an exact number of votes. At least round it up. At least say, hey, guys, do you think you can find me? Like, I need like 12,000 or more votes. Do you think that's possible if we do an audit? That sounds reasonable. (laughs) But he gave the exact number. And now the excuse is he's not a politician. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike says, dude, there are hundreds of thousands of laws. That argument is silly. It's not silly. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse to violate the law. It's not. I'll give you a perfect example. I work during the daytime in the tax industry. I specifically give uh, counsel to day traders. So I am an expert on day trade taxes. I take 10 to 12 calls a day to help day traders with taxes. Now, if you trade stocks and options, you would know that there's something called a wash sale. A wash sale is when you sell a stock for a loss and you buy it back within 30 days. When you do that, you you, uh, have created a wash sale and you don't get to use that loss against your gains at the end of the year. Now, very few people know this law, but they're held accountable to it to an extreme. I spoke to a man yesterday who technically lost $90,000, but because he generated so many wash sales 
over his year of trading, the IRS says he owes $900,000. Now, he didn't know about that law. There is no nothing published anywhere on brokerage accounts, anywhere where you would know that that is a potential problem. Do you think the IRS is telling him, well, you know, you didn't know about that law, so we're going to forgive you? Hell no. His life is ruined. His life is ruined. He's going to have to sell his house. He's retired. He's going to have to go back to work. And somehow he's going to have to make payments on that $900,000. I spoke to another woman three days ago. She had $700,000 in wash sales. And you know what the government says about it? They say ignorance of the law is no excuse. This is reality. This is where you live. Now, maybe in smaller areas where... It's a small infraction. You can go before a judge and you can say, I didn't know. But something as simple as running a red light, you cannot say, I didn't know. This is the reality. Uh, Mike says, and now you know why people hate the IRS. I Look, I totally, I totally agree with you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to change when I ran for Congress was that brokerages would be required to notify traders when they've created a wash sale. They're not required to do that right now. And it's so easy to become a day trader. You just pick up any app and start trading and you don't know, you can ruin your life. You can literally ruin your life. And why do you ruin your life? because of ignorance of the law. And I get calls every single day from people saying, I didn't know, can I go backwards? How do I fix this? And my answer is always the same. You have to call the IRS, you have to sit on hold with them for an entire day, and you have to throw yourself on the mercy of the court. And the only other alternative is to hire a tax attorney. And I I probably four or five calls a week that I get because people have ruined their lives on wash sales. And it's just ignorance of the law. Um, Let's see. Mike says in Salt Lake City, the prosecutor said they would go after grandma for collecting water that fell on her property and she collected it in a bucket. (laughs) <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the fact that you can't collect rainwater for your own house, that's just outrageous to me. Uh, Mike says there are stupid laws on the books. Of course there are. And there are laws that go back hundreds of years that are still on the books. And technically, you could get held accountable to those laws. And I think there should be a concerted effort to try and... um and, uh, you know, get out, of, you know, get rid of those laws. Mike says a thousand percent. Yes. Hire a tax attorney and formulate a settlement. Um, and I can tell you the IRS is not too keen on, um, making settlements with people who just incurred the debt. And, uh, I've, I've seen the IRS say to people, um, who said, I can't, I can't make the payments. I can't pay off the debt. And they'll do an appraisal of their house and they'll say, you have enough in your house. And so we're not going to do an offer and compromise for you. And so your only choice is to sell your house. And I just see that over and over again. So. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Again, I'd really appreciate it if you uh, take a minute, click on the description. And if you like the content, you can tip me. It's like I'm a server back in my restaurant days. Or you can go to jmcfarland.com and you can 
join the club, join the members club for a monthly donation. It, the very least you could do to help me out is like, subscribe, follow, all of those great things. And uh, it's going to be a ride. This whole Trump thing is going to be a ride. Buckle up. It's not the first Trump roller coaster we're going to be on. Buckle up and uh, let's, uh, you know, <laughs> get your popcorn ready. Mike says, let's do a, a call in sometime. You have my DM. We can arrange it. Always a pleasure, Jay. Mike, it's always great to hear from you. Um, I love that you bring uh, an adverse opinion um, and you do it with respect. Thank you, Orion. The same. I think a lot of our other listeners just kind of sit and watch as other people go at it. Um, but at any rate, thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful night. And we will see what comes up tomorrow. That's for sure. Good night, my friends. I will talk to you soon. Oh, one, one other thing, just so you know. I am posting new content on all of my social media just about every day. So TikTok, YouTube Shorts. Um, I haven't had as much time to do long form videos and podcasts. Um, but if you look at those sites and subscribe, I'm doing commentary all the time about the different issues of the, uh, of the day. So follow me there as well. All right. Talk to you soon.